Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What we're going to look at today is section 1.4, transformations of functions, okay? Uh, come to think of it, actually, I'm going to make this uh, part one, I think, because um, it's uh, uh, there's a bit of a background that we need to know here. And uh, what that background is, is, you need to know six basic functions, okay? You need to know six basic functions, which you saw, uh, the first of which you saw in grade 10, and then we looked at the rest of them in grade 11, okay? So here is the list of six functions that you need to have a pretty good grasp of. You need to know what they originally look like. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what these functions look like, if you're given a function like this and you can't tell what it is, your one resort that you can always do is a table of values, right? You pick an X, you find a Y. So you see with a linear function that no matter what X I pick, I will always have the same Y. So when X is 1, Y is 1. When X is 2, Y is 2, 3, 3. And we end up having what we call a linear function, okay? This one is a linear function. And if you look at uh, a negative X, this line right here would be Y is equal to negative X, okay? So linear functions, one of the first basic functions that we looked at. This one here, X squared, it's a quadratic function. If you did a table of values and you picked a bunch of numbers, X, X, X is zero, Y is zero. If X was one, Y is one. If X is two, what's two squared? Four. Well, I'm gonna fly through this because you should have a pretty good idea. Zero, zero, one, one, two, four is a parabola. This is something that we looked at in quite a bit of detail in grade 11, okay? Now, if you remember, uh, how can we make this thing go upside down, right? Just like we can flip this, you put a negative up front. This is y equals negative x squared, okay? So the idea here is that you know what the original function is. I'm just showing you a basic, what we call reflection, okay? And um, the sooner you grasp these functions, the easier the next section is gonna be, okay? Because we're gonna be looking at these and transforming them all over the graph. This one right here is gonna be our example because we transformed that last year. We made it skinnier, we made it fatter, we moved it up, we moved it down, and we flipped it over the x-axis, okay? So this is gonna be our example function in part two. What I wanna do right now is just remind you of all these basic functions, okay? Here's a cubic function. Uh, when x is zero, y is zero. When x is one, y is one. When x is two, y is eight. Two, four, six, eight. And we have the same thing on this side. When x is negative one, because we're cubing, it remains negative, negative one. 2, negative 8, 2, 4, 6, negative 8, okay? And you have a cubic function that looks like that. If you want a negative cubic, it ends up flipping over that x-axis again, okay? Let's look at a couple more here. We have the absolute value of x, okay? Uh, absolute value just simply means that your value always becomes positive. So, the absolute value of 0 is 0, absolute value of 1 is 1, 2 is 2. What's the absolute value of negative 1? 1. The absolute value of negative 2, 2. We have a V, okay? And similarly, it's going to open down for a, a negative absolute value of X, okay? Uh, this is called a radical function. Okay, let's look at this. This is quadratic. This is cubic. This is absolute value. This is what we call a radical function. And this is what we call either a reciprocal. You can also call it rational. Okay, so... Uh, square root of X. We hopefully understand that you can't have negative numbers, so it's not going to exist over here. Can you take the square root of zero? Absolutely, it's zero. The square root of one is one. Square root of four is two. Square root of nine is three. There you go. Okay, take values of X that you know the square root of. You can take the square root of 2, but the square root of 2 is 1.4. Okay, well, there you go. It's a little difficult, more difficult to grasp. The last function we're going to quickly look at here is called the reciprocal or rational function. These last two here, these have restrictions. 
okay? So there's values that cannot exist. Here, your domain x has to be greater than or equal to zero. It can't exist down here. Now, the only thing that you can't have here is zero. So here, x can't be zero. So what we have is what we call an asymptote that runs right down the middle. x can't be zero. And if you make a table of values, you'll see that if x is one, one over one is one. One over two is a half and a third and a quarter. And if you take x is a half, one over a half is two. So you end up with a graph that looks like this. These are six functions that you need to have a good grasp of. Okay, you need to know what these basic functions look like before you change them, before you add, subtract, before you put a two in front, or um, add a number at the back, or go x minus two squared. Okay, so there's a bunch of, you have to understand these functions, these six ones. Now, I'm going to quickly give you a quick rundown on uh, parabola, right? So if my original parabola, okay, recall a parabola. Okay, <coughs> recall parabola. It is a quadratic function, <coughs> and what it looks like basically is this, right? Just like that. Nice crooked axis. You like that? Now, we started off with y equals x squared, but then we ended up looking at this. y is equal to a bracket x minus p all squared plus q. Okay, this was after all the transformations. You may have seen it like this, a bracket x minus h all squared plus k. Okay, if you can remember the vertex being at h, k, or p, q, whatever it is, and the a, right, told us the shape. Uh, if a was greater than 1, it got steeper. If... A was between 0 and 1, it got flatter. And then if A was less than uh, 0, it's a flip over the x-axis. Okay, that is our um, reflection. So <clears throat> what I'm going to ask you, is if you can graph something like this, 2 bracket x minus 3 all squared plus 1. Okay, how would we go about graphing that? Hopefully you can see that our vertex, if you can remember the vertex, is at 3 and 1. It's the opposite, right? What do you do to this 3 or this x to get back to... Well, you've subtracted 3, so you need to add 3 to get back to x. Boom, there's the 3, and it means that it's gone up 1. If you don't remember how to graph parabolas, folks, look back at the uh, pre-calc 11 videos that show you how to graph quadratics, okay? I'm going to quickly draw this for you. That means that at 3, 1, you have your vertex, and it's got a shape of positive 2. So if you go over 1, it used to be up 1, but you've increased it. You've doubled it, so it goes up 2. You used to go up 2 and up 4, but now you go over up 2 and up 8. And we have a steeper parabola like this that's moved over to the right 3 and up 1. This is just to introduce you to the idea of transformations, folks. The beauty of this stuff is that it works the same for every single function. Okay? Check out part 2, and um, hopefully you'll make, be able to make some sense of it.